Have you ever been editing your pet photos in Lightroom and you've come across a really stubborn red color cast, usually in the shadows, and it's usually because you've been shooting with backlight and maybe you've got a little bit of flare in your photo. It can be a really difficult color cast to remove and often I take it into Photoshop to do. However, there is a way that you can do it in Lightroom and I'm gonna show you what that is. Hey there, my name's Charlotte Reeves. I'm from Unleashed Education and you've tuned into another editing toolbox video where we show you one quick tip, trick or technique to help make your pet photography editing life easier. So this time we're talking about color casts, specifically red color casts in the shadows. So this image here, as you can see, I was shooting with backlight and as you can see, there's a little bit of flare here as well. So there's a bit of a rainbow kind of artifact here. That's a dead giveaway. There was some flare. Now I've gone through and adjusted the color temperature here. I've adjusted the sliders in the basic adjustments panel here, but I'm just still stuck with this red color cast. The whites actually look pretty good, but as you can see in the eyes and in the really dark areas, there's definitely some red there that's proving very difficult to remove. So we can get rid of it though. So if we go to the tone curve, you might be familiar with the tone curve already and you might use the highlights, lights, darks and shadow sliders to help get maybe a little bit of extra contrast in your image. It's really great for that. Basically what you're doing here is targeting particular areas or regions of the image. You can even click directly on the little line here in the histogram in the curve and actually drag that up and down and that will also change the slider accordingly. And then you've got these little sliders down the bottom and that will change the size of the region that you're targeting as well. So that can be really handy. But did you know that you can also target individual color channels? So sitting in behind that tone curve, you've actually got another tone curve here and this is called the points tone curve. So with this one, you can actually click on the line to add points. Now, generally when you are dragging the line up, dragging the curve up, you are lightening the tones in that area of the histogram. If you drag it down, you're darkening the tones. So if you wanted to create contrast, you would take the top of the curve up and the bottom of the curve down. That's gonna create contrast. So that also horribly accentuates the red in there. So that is not the fix we're talking about here. Just incidentally, if you did add some points to this curve and you wanna get rid of them, you can either right click and go delete control point or you can just double click on them and they will disappear. So the ones that we're concerned about here are these three little icons at the top. So basically these target specific colors. So we've got a red cyan curve, we've got a green magenta curve, and we've also got a blue yellow curve. So how these curves work, if you drag the curve up, it will move those tones more towards red. If you drag them down, it will move them more towards cyan. And you can kind of see that the histogram box here where the curve is going across is kind of divided into red and cyan. That sort of helps you remember what those adjustments do. So as you can see, on the red cyan curve, we actually don't have a lot of information down the bottom here. So if we wanted to bring those dark red tones, so the shadow tones more into cyan to counteract all the red that we've got, you can actually grab the little selector here and then go over the image, find an area where there's kind of a dark area of tone in the red. You'll actually see on the tone curve, when I move my mouse around, where it's gonna add that point. So we wanna try and get this nice and dark. So maybe down here, and then you can click and drag down and see how it's going to actually pull that curve down. Now that does get rid of the red. However, see how it's affecting the rest of the curve there. So it's basically pulling all the tones down into that cyan area. So you can manually click on the tone curve and add another point and kind of bring that up again, but you're still kind of stuck with a bit of a curve. So if you want more of a result that's linear, you can do that as well. So let's get rid of those points. I'm just gonna double click on them. 
So instead of doing that, I'm going to grab this very first point. So this is the input point down the bottom. And I'm just going to drag that across to the right a little bit and see how that keeps that line. It keeps that curve. Well, it keeps it as a straight line instead of a curve. So it makes a more linear adjustment. So it's pulling the tones down into the cyan kind of region, but it's doing it more at the bottom than it is at the top. See how that line has moved more from that center line at the bottom. So if we move this across here, see how it's getting rid of all of those red tones in the shadows. Now it does get to a point where it starts making the shadows cyan. So we don't want to go into that zone. So we probably only really want to go across to about here. So as you can see, that's definitely helped to remove those red tones from the shadows. And now the shadows look sort of warm and yellow and orange rather than red, which is a much nicer effect. So you can actually go into the other color curves here. So as you can see, there's also a little bit of a gap in the green magenta area. So it's kind of indicating to me that the shadows are a little bit green and you can kind of see that in this area here. So I'm also going to just pull that across a little bit. And that then takes those tones into more of a magenta. It gets sort of the green out of the shadows. So I think with those two adjustments, let me just turn that off and on, makes a really big difference to the image. And it's just really, really easy to do. You do have access to these same sorts of controls when you go into Photoshop, but I always feel that with color casts, you're wanting to try and get the most you can out of the raw file. So the more that you can do in Lightroom, the better. Hope this has been helpful for you. If you do have any questions, please post them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Until next time, have fun with your pet photography editing. See ya.